Welcome back to the Darting Through the Faith podcast. I'm Father Sean Wilson, and with me is Julia Monin, as usual. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Father Sean. How are you? Good. Hey, question. Sure. You know how Jesus in the scriptures renamed, or not Jesus, but like God <laughs> renamed people in the scriptures. So like Abram became Abraham mm-hmm. and so forth and whatnot. Mm-hmm. If you were to be renamed, mm. what would you be renamed? Yeah, so Abram went to Abraham. He got mm-hmm. an extra syllable. Mm-hmm. So just off the top of my head, mm-hmm. maybe I'd get an extra syllable and be Shonald. <laughs> yes. I say that with a shout out to Father Zach Cecil down okay. in Cincinnati, All right. who for the last decade has called me Shonald. Okay. Uh, he calls me Father Shonald. Father Shonald. Sometimes, Very but, uh, yeah. but yeah. Um, right. Yeah. That's so, awesome. That's all I got. Uh, yeah, I saw wow. him on Thursday. Okay. And uh, and yeah, he just comes right up and mm-hmm. you know it's, it's very funny. Right. And he's a very funny man. Right. Okay. So, shout out. Shout out. Right. To the humor of Father Zach Cecil. I love that. Okay. Yeah. Man, that just went. Pfft. Yeah, Damn. I had an answer right off the bat. Absolutely, you did. You like like I was prepping you with that, but it just came to mind when you told me or when you announced yourself again, Father Sean Wilson. Mm-hmm. So. I was very in the if moment prompting a, there. Yeah. Wow. What would your new name be? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Are there any women that get new names in the Bible? Sarah. Mm. Right. Sarah. Sarai. Mm-hmm. Sure. Right. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't oh, know. Oh, what's her face? You think that would be? <laughs> oh, what's her face? <laughs> hmm. Uh, yeah, I got nothing. Sorry. You got nothing. I, li- I like how you... I like how you had your answer. I have nothing more to add to that. That's okay. <laughs> you don't have anybody that calls you by a ridiculous name that kind of sounds like your name? You. Oh, yeah. I call you Julia. Julia. Right. That's the most ridiculous name that kind of sounds like my name. It's not a ridiculous name, but it's, it's not my name. It's not your name. Mm-hmm. 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 Right. Julia. Julia. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's it. I got nothing. All right. Well, what are we so, doing? Praying? Oh, Probably should. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your great gift in founding the church upon the bedrock, upon the teaching, and upon the witness of the apostles. I ask that you may stir in this same spirit in your church today, in our hearts, in the hearts of all of our listeners, this apostolic boldness to draw all people to yourself through the mystery of the church. We entrust this time into the hands of Mary, the mother of the church and into the intercession of Pope St. John Paul II, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Yeah. So we are talking about the, the church. church, the church being apostolic, mm-hmm. paragraphs 857 through 865. The church is apostolic, 857 through 865. Okay, where are we, first of all? So... You probably recall in the creed. So the mm-hmm. first section of the catechism is all about mm-hmm. the creed. So we're in that section mm-hmm. that we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. So it's just taking that one little, I believe in that, that the church is apostolic, mm-hmm. taking 12, 13 paragraphs to say, what do we mean by that? So I love that. We're taking one word and we're going to take 13 paragraphs <laughs> to summarize. Right. I, I don't laugh like that's a bad thing. All right, that's yeah, a good thing. It's right? great. It is you know? great. That's how so we much learn. we could say. It's why mm-hmm. we got this. Big mm-hmm. old catechism. It's awesome. It is a gift. What a gift to our church. You're telling me. Okay. Yes. All right. So this begins by the church's can't apostolic. Change it. Can't change it. Yeah. Sorry. There's this whole thing about. Yeah. yeah. Let's not go there. Okay. Some <laughs> cardinal that was saying nonsense over in Germany about the catechism can change. It's like, mm. that's not helpful. Mm. That's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. Okay. Yeah. Story for another day. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, probably listen to a different podcast that could probably talk more about this. We're talking about what the catechism actually says. Mm-hmm. That seems like a good time for you to plug what you actually. Your mom. Yeah. So <laughs> the Pillar Podcast has a great explainer about uh-huh. what this guy said and what he means and mm-hmm. what is actually the truth. So mm-hmm. shout out to the Pillar. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can read the PillarCatholic.com, mm-hmm. uh, which has Catholic news site, probably about the best one out there, mm-hmm. and it's very intelligent because both the guys are canon lawyers, so they mm-hmm. know what actually the church can, can't do, is and ought to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and they also have a podcast. Mm-hmm. So you can get their mugs. 
um, when Father Alex McCullough buys one for you. Oh, there so, you go. You did it. Yeah. You did it beautifully. We we shouted out to Father Alex McCullough and the Pillar Podcast. And Father Zach Cecil. And Father... Well, that was unexpected. That was just... That was beauty mm. right there. Wow. Well done. Well, you know. So, see? There is people who have intelligent things to say, who have the authority to say intelligent things about matters such as what you brought up. Mm -hmm. I am not one of those people. I won't say the same for you. I will. <laughs> I know you were, you lobbed that one up for me. <laughs> Knocked it out. <laughs> All right, the church is apostolic. This first paragraph, 857, yeah. I think we could just talk about that mm -hmm. and just stick with that, but we won't. Okay. But it's just, what do we mean when we say the church is founded upon the apostles mm -hmm. in three ways? Mm -hmm. She was and remains built on the foundation of the apostles, the witnesses chosen and sent on mission by Christ himself. So that's the first way that the church is apostolic, what this means. She was and remains built on the foundation of the apostles. Also, with the help of the Spirit dwelling in her, the church keeps and hands on the teaching, the quote-unquote good deposit, the salutary words she has heard from the apostles. So with the help of the Spirit dwelling in her, the church keeps and hands on the teaching. That's also what it means that the church is apostolic. And then thirdly, she continues to be taught, sanctified, and guided by the apostles until Christ's return through their successors in pastoral office. These successors being the College of Bishops, assisted by priests in union with the successor of Peter, the church's supreme pastor. So that's the third way. She continues to be taught, sanctified, and guided by the apostles until Christ's return. Again, we're saying she. We're hearing that pronoun she. Mm. That's re referring to the church. Right? right. Okay. Okay, good. And not it, which actually gives it a whole lot of personhood, right? Mm -hmm. To call it she, not the church it. It's beautiful. It is. It is. So these three ways, right? So mm -hmm. it's founded upon the apostles. So they're the ones that are first sent after Christ, and they're the, basically the building blocks of the church, and that'll mm -hmm. get get uh, get in there, those first witnesses to send out, be sent out after Christ himself. So they're just like in the, the United States, we talk about the founding fathers or those mm -hmm. who established the United States of America. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, the apostles, probably in a much deeper way uh, than a bunch of dudes that signed their name to a declaration of independence probably shouldn't undermine that, but, mm -hmm. um, the apostles founded the church mm -hmm. in that, well, Christ found it. They were the, you know, they're the ones that's built upon. Mm -hmm. And then the church continues to, uh, reflect and to transmit the, uh, the teachings of the apostles. And that's what we call the new Testament. Mm -hmm. Most of the new Testament is written by one of the apostles. Now there's a couple, couple things that aren't, Two of them off the top of your head. Can you name two of the things that aren't written by the apostles? And for the sake of yeah. argument, Paul calls himself an apostle, just one that's born abnormally. So we'll count right. Paul right. as an apostle. Right, right. Okay. Um, is the book of Hebrews in the New Testament? The letter to the Hebrews. The letter to the Hebrews. Okay. Yeah. So would that be one? Well, yeah. great question, because, uh -huh. you know, the letter to the Hebrews, it's disputed as to who wrote it. I know. So when we read it at the le lectionary, it's mm -hmm. just a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say a letter from St. Paul to the Hebrews, mm -hmm. although some people would say St. Paul. Okay. All right. Well, so we have the Gospels. We have the letters, which are mostly Paul. We have the letters of the Hebrews, the Acts, which were written by Luke, correct? Mm -hmm. And then Revelation which was John, and then John's letters. So I don't know, I'm coming up short, man. Oh, you said one of them. I did? Yeah. What did I say? Luke's not one of the 12. Oh, yeah. sure, okay. Yeah. Right. So that's Luke okay. and Acts, uh -huh. another, and then Mark's not one of the 12 Okay. Either. Yeah. Right, all right. And Mark, Mark was like by, it, it doesn't tradition say that Mark is writing like from the perspective of Peter? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Luke is was uh, a companion of Paul, so probably the gospel that Paul received is that, and then what he's preaching is then what Luke transcribes and hands on. Great question, man. Great yeah. question. Yeah, you did what you did. Be, you knew it better than you thought. You know, I knew it, but I didn't know you it. You knew it, but yeah. yeah. But I put you on the spot. I'm sure I if like you had it. time to think about it. And well, I don't know because yeah. I was just lumping Luke and Mark right in there with. Oh, they were a given. I didn't even think twice about them. But right. No. Yeah. Right. Okay, good. We get into some gnarly stuff, though, from there about the authorship of the Gospels and all of that, so... Let's not. That, that let's, seems beyond what I'm capable of doing. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> all what right. the Lord is calling us to do right, right now. Right, that's right. 
All right, so moving on then with that, in 858, it reads, Jesus is the Father's... Emissary. Emissary. Thank you. Emissary. From the beginning of his ministry, he called to him those whom he desired, and he appointed 12, whom also he named apostles to be with him and to be sent out to preach. From then on, they would also be his emissaries. In them, Christ continues his own mission. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. The apostles' ministry is the continuation of his mission. Jesus said to the 12, he who receives you receives me. So that word emissary basically mm-hmm. in Greek is apostola loi, loi, something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Somebody who knows Greek is going to be shouting in there, shouting into the speaker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Say that right. But basically you hear the word apostle, mm-hmm. right? Apostle is one that's sent. So Jesus mm-hmm. is sent from the Father, and then mm-hmm. he sends people out. He sends out the 12 apostles mm-hmm. uh, who are sent out. So it's like this... this um, Reality of being sent. So mm-hmm. Christ sent from the Father. And then he even says, as the Father sends me, so I also send you. <coughs> Which is remarkable mm-hmm. that the Lord actually chooses. So first he chooses these mm-hmm. and then he and then he sends them. So they there's some there's some weight behind that if we recognize that the it's the Lord that's sending us. Oh, it's absolutely it's it's mind blowing. Mm-hmm. And then to think about even Christ coming, establishing the church forming the 12, sending the 12 to do like, to even think about like, that's so slow. That's like such a small seed mm-hmm. to be planted 12. And I, I know that there's scriptural significance to that number 12, but to think about that reality, it wasn't just Christ came and then everybody had this fullness of knowledge immediately that right. he is the one to come. And it was just this slow and steady, slow and steady. It, it's mind blowing. It is. Ah. But you, you see like in the mass at the end of mass, Go forth, the mass is ended. That is Christ sending us again. Mm. Right? Like every time we go to mass, it's as if Christ sends us out. Yesterday, uh, praise the Lord, we celebrated the sacrament of confirmation. The Archbishop mm. came up and sent our young people out. Right? Mm. You receive the Holy Spirit just as Christ, the Holy Spirit came down upon the apostles to mm. be sent again. Mm. So that gift of confirmation is also what, what sends us out, just mm. like the apostles were sent out with mm-hmm. it. So, right, right. It's not just a way back. We keep reliving these mysteries. Mm-hmm. As so. the Father has sent me, even so I send you. Moving on with the next paragraph, Jesus unites them to the mission he received from the Father. As the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but receives everything from the Father who sent him, so those whom Jesus sends can do nothing apart from him, from whom they received both the mandate for their mission and the power to carry it out. I really love that, that reality. And that is it, that Jesus not only calls them and gives them this mandate of what their mission is, but then also the, they are empowered to actually carry it out because those are two very different things. Mm -hmm. Right. Without me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's not like he just like kicks you out and says, all right, go figure it out. You're supposed to go help. And Mm -hmm. he's, he's working, he's working with them. He Mm -hmm. sends the Holy spirit alongside of them to guide them, to strengthen them, to console them, to convict them, Mm -hmm. all those different things. Mm -hmm. And then all these different names at the end of that paragraph, ambassadors for Christ, servants of God, ministers of the new covenant, Mm -hmm. servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Stewards of the mysteries of God. Mm. Mm. I think that's 2 Corinthians. Mm, That's good. It's great. Mm. Yeah, you're right. It is. So says the footnote. (laughs) So says... So speaketh the right, footnote. Right, right, okay. Um, in the office of the apostles, there is one aspect that cannot be transmitted to be the chosen witnesses of the Lord's resurrection, and so the foundation stones of the church. Okay, so that is them and only them. Right. Right? Yes, we will not be there at an empty tomb, like literally. We'll right. We'll celebrate Easter, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, but their office also has a permanent aspect. Christ promised to remain with them always, as we said earlier, earlier, the divine mission entrusted by Jesus to them will continue to the end of time, since the gospel they handed on is the lasting source of all life for the church. Therefore, the apostles took care to appoint successors. Right. Right. And you see that right from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So Ju- Judas uh, kills himself and mm-hmm. leaves leaves the fold. Mm-hmm. And they say, well, we need another to take his place. And mm-hmm. that's when you have Matthias, right? Okay. Matthias I'm is sorry, chosen yeah. to okay. to take to take his place. So I wasn't picking up what you were, 
what you were asking me. Oh, that's all right. It's all good. Um, Okay, so then, yeah, the next few paragraphs then talk about the bishops being the successors of the apostles. Of course, in order that the mission entrusted to them might be continued after their death, the apostles consigned by will and testament, as it were, to their immediate collaborators the duty of completing and consolidating the work they had begun, urging them to tend to the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit had appointed them to shepherd the church of God. They accordingly designated such men and then made the ruling that the wise, that likewise on their death, other proven men should take over their ministry. So, of course, they don't know when Christ is coming again. Right. They suspect, I believe, that it's going to happen sooner than later, but also know that I'm not, I'm going to die. And so we need to appoint successors upon my death and also upon your death, make sure you do the same. Right. Mm -hmm. And that too is that mind blowing aspect of how Christ, how God chooses to grow, to build and grow his church. It's not like this one and done snap of the fingers. It's a slow and steady development and continuation from successor to successor over time. That's mind blowing. It is. Why would he do that? (laughs) Why would he entrust all this to us, Father Sean? Oh, he's not. We just all have our own little part to play, mm. right? Like, and sometimes we get, and there's probably that twofold, you know, there's the mm. two extremes like, oh my gosh, this all comes down to our own. Why would he hand this over mm. to us? And on the other hand, it's like, oh no, God's just going to do everything. And it's at, it's like a both and, like mm-hmm. he gives us, he he's doing everything, mm-hmm. but he invites us to be faithful. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the, the fruitfulness is dependent upon our fidelity. So sometimes and always. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes and always. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but it's it's the bishops who are the primary like we call successors to the apostles. So mm-hmm. those who are ordained bishops, right, can trace their lineage mm-hmm. ultimately back to the apostles. Right, one bishop hands off. So mm-hmm. let's just say if I went to you know let's just say Father Jedediah and said, Hey, could you ordain me a bishop? Mm-hmm. It wouldn't happen because he hasn't he's not in that unbroken line back to the apostles. Mm-hmm. You should announce the exciting news about the bishop, the oh, new, yeah. newly elected bishop of Columbus. Sure, yeah. So the uh, the newly elected, the newly appointed mm-hmm. elected, I guess, bishop of Columbus is a priest from the Archdiocese of Cincinnati, mm-hmm. Father Earl K. Fernandez. Mm-hmm. I don't know what K stands for, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, Father Earl Fernandez is uh, is incredible. Mm-hmm. I mean, the people of Columbus don't know what it's about ready to hit him mm-hmm. because he is just a wonderful man, but more energy in in a good way mm-hmm. than I have ever seen. Mm-hmm. So he's a phenomenal man, phenomenal priest, faithful man, incredibly smart, hardworking, joyful, loves being a priest, mm-hmm. and uh, a great mentor. So mm-hmm. I talked to him on the phone. So we're recording this on Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, the previous Saturday is when that was anoint- uh, that was announced. Mm-hmm. The Thursday before this, I talked to him on the phone mm-hmm. and just... Out of the blue, I called him because he's a moral theologian by training and about a medical ethics question. Mm-hmm. And he had the answer to me real quick. He was mm-hmm. in the middle of who knows how many different things. <laughs> um, but uh-huh. when you walk as fast as him, you don't need to bilocate. <laughs> Is that accurate? That's accurate. Yeah, that's accurate. So evidently, uh, so he's he's currently serving as the pastor of St. Ignatius of Loyola Church, big old church in uh, in. Um, Cincinnati, a big mm-hmm. parish, mm-hmm. and uh, it, the parishioners call him Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> he talks and walks yeah, real fast. That's good. But I think it comes from, uh, yeah, I'm getting on a, I'm getting on tangential. That's all but, good. <laughs> uh, I was thinking, so I've been praying for him a lot, and uh, I was thinking, whoever's the one that has to be like his MC and like go with him to confirmations and mm-hmm. to different events, like. I pity that guy because mm-hmm. get some new shoes, get some new shoes and just <laughs> Be ready to don't move. try to keep up. That's, that's what I found. Cause I've interacted with him so much and mm-hmm. it's so many different things. It's like, mm-hmm. just let him do his thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. don't try to, you know, God mm-hmm. created us each in our own way. Mm-hmm. Some of us, uh, with less energy than others. <laughs> that's right. What a gift. For, yeah. Uh, for yeah. The whole church. Praise the oh, Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right, so a successor of the apostles, bishops. Mm -hmm. Okay. And continuing in this section, paragraph 862, just as the office which the Lord confided to Peter alone as first of the apostles destined to be transmitted to his successors is a permanent one, so also endures the office which the apostles received of shepherding the church, a charge destined to be exercised without interruption by the sacred order of bishops. Hence, the church teaches that the bishops have by divine institution taken the place of the apostles as pastors of the church in such 
in such wise that whoever listens to them is listening to Christ, and whoever despises them despises Christ and him who sent Christ. Okay. That's a big deal. Yeah. That's a real big deal. Mm-hmm. It's the importance of the bishop for the local church, mm-hmm. right? That you want to know what the uh, what the church teaches or what your life's supposed to be, well, listen to the bishop. Mm-hmm. And it gives quite a, a weight to the responsibility of a bishop, right? Mm-hmm. To lend your voice to Christ in mm-hmm. so many different matters. Mm-hmm. But we trust that just as the Holy Spirit sustained the apostles, he'll mm-hmm. sustain the bishops. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. That doesn't mean everything that the bishop says is infallible and the absolute truth or that he can't make judgment mistakes, but for the good of the faithful, mm-hmm. it is it is to listen to him. Mm-hmm. So Right. Right. Makes sense. You think about something like maybe a great example of that is Padre Pio. Mm-hmm. So Padre Pio is having all these miraculous things happening and, and it's causing people to go crazy, right? Some people mm-hmm. just, oh, this guy's incredible, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, Padre Pio says... Uh, or the bishop says, well, for just the commotion that's happening before we can investigate things, the bishop says, you're not allowed to celebrate Mass mm-hmm. publicly, Padre Pio, mm-hmm. which he takes as mm-hmm. as the, the will of God. And mm-hmm. people start like this crusade to free Padre Pio. Mm-hmm. And Padre Pio writes to the bishop, he says, just so you know, I have nothing to do with these people. Mm-hmm. I will do whatever you ask of me. Mm-hmm. That's the way it should be, mm-hmm. right? That's how the saints lived it. Mm-hmm. They're not going to, yeah, so. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a, that's a beautiful Example, yeah. Right. Of his holiness and his humility. Right. At work in that. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Then continuing in this last section, the last few paragraphs. So this, this is, is an apostolate. The, the actual, yeah, the, the definition of the apostolate. What is this? The whole church is apostolic. In it, she remains through the successors of St. Peter and other apostles in communion of faith and life with her origin. And in that, she is sent out into the world. Can I stop there for a second? Because I get the question, you know, what's the difference between apostles and disciples? Mm. So we hear that. What's that difference between Jesus' disciples and Jesus' apostles? So disciples are like, right, disciples are learning. They're sitting students. at the foot of the master. Yeah. They're students being, teach, being taught. And then the apostles would be, they're sent out. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Okay. We should all be both. Right. Yes. We should all be both. We should be students. And you're probably student first. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you're sent out. But... Mm-hmm. Um, just like any job, you always need ongoing formation. Mm-hmm. And so we've got to always be students and always being sent out. Mm-hmm. So Right. Okay. All members of the church share in this mission, though in various ways. The Christian vocation is, of its nature, a vocation to the apostolate as well. Indeed, we call an apostolate every activity of the mystical body that aims to spread the kingdom of Christ over all the earth. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, and do you hear that? Everybody's called to that, mm-hmm. to spread the kingdom of God over all the earth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's all of our responsibility. Mm-hmm. That's <clears throat> mm-hmm. it's a big task. It is. And as it says, in, in various ways, because obviously all of us are living different vocations, sure. walking in different states of life, working in different environments, so in various ways, but that reality of as Christians, we are sent out into the world to be that leaven mm-hmm. of, of Christ in the world around us, right? Right. Okay. Absolutely. This next paragraph was my favorite. Okay. Christ, sent by the Father, is the source of the church's whole apostolate. Thus, the fruitfulness of apostolate for ordained ministers, as well as for lay people, clearly depends on their vital union with Christ. So if Christ is the source of the church's whole apostolate then how we are united with him absolutely depends. Our, the fruitfulness depends on how well we are united with him. That makes sense, right? It ought to. It ought to. <laughs> in keeping with their vocations, okay, so the duties of your state in life, the vocation you're called to, the demands of the times and the various gifts of the Holy Spirit, the apostolate assumes the most varied forms. But charity drawn from the Eucharist above all is always, as it were, the soul of the whole apostolate. The Eucharist is the soul of the whole apostolate. So Christ is the source. The Eucharist is the soul. It all is stemming from there to there, through there. And returning back there. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And that, for the, for all of us who are involved in the apostolate, which mm-hmm. ought to be all of us, but mm-hmm. let's just be honest, not everybody participates in the apostolate. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that should always be a reminder to us, mm-hmm. especially those of us that like professionally 
work in the church? You know, mm -hmm. what's what's the soul? Is it the right strategy? Is the right you know marketing? Is it the right whatever? You know, this that formation tools, videos, da 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 da. Or is the soul of what we do the Eucharist? Mm -hmm. Is is that is that it? Are we laying our plans at the feet of the Blessed Sacrament and saying, Lord, you do with this whatever you want, mm -hmm. um, and tell me where things need to change, or mm -hmm. are we relying on our own ingenuity? Mm -hmm. That's questions I ask myself all the time, this, I, and I ought to ask myself more. This paragraph, when upon reading it, I have a, you know, I have a, an apostolate journeys revealed mm -hmm. ministries. And shout out, shout out, <laughs> shout that, out to yourself, to myself, and to my team. Yeah, um, it's not just me and my team and my board. Um, but anyway, I read that and immediately pulled out. I have like a a list of quotes that just keep us on purpose and keep us mm -hmm. on focus and keep us on mission of, of what God has sent us out into the world to do. I assume that's just mostly things I've said. It's yeah, <laughs> right. As a chaplain to our board, it is definitely mostly things you've said. That's and by right. that, none of, <laughs> but, but anyway, I was this... hoping that was the right, I hope I, was, I would have been like real red. If there, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, let's right. go on. We, well, I went ahead and just added this to, nice. to that right away because that is the essence of it. Like, are we being formed in Christ and are we mm -hmm. clearly united with him? Because the fruitfulness is, is going to depend on how clearly we are united to him and the Eucharist is the soul of it. So where is that in our life as an apostolate as well? So that's the heart of it. I loved that. True dad. Mm, paragraph 864. That's what we were reading there. And then lastly, the church is ultimately one holy Catholic and apostolic in her deepest and ultimate identity, because it is in her that the kingdom of heaven, the reign of God already exists and will be fulfilled at the end of time. The kingdom has come in the person of Christ and grows mysteriously in the hearts of those incorporated into him until it's full as es es eschatological manifestation. So that's like the end times, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then all those he has redeemed and made holy and blameless before him in love will be gathered together as the one people of God, the bride of the lamb, the holy city, Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God for the wall of the city had 12 foundations and on them, the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the lamb. Mm. So the church will be continuing her mission until the end of time. Mm -hmm. And that's ultimately the goal of the mission, right? To draw everybody into this wedding feast of the lamb. Mm -hmm. So how the church does that has, has always changed, right? The beautiful thing about the church, her apostolate has morphed to, uh, to encounter the needs of the time mm -hmm. and the way people's were, the way people's have behaved and the, the way culture has grown so that the, the church can always speak into those things. But we'll be continuing this apostle until the end of time. There won't be a time when the church is non-existent until our Lord returns. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess that's good news. Yeah. This is the means he established through Christ and has passed down to us through the apostles. And they continue. The church is apostolic. Mm -hmm. Founded on the apostles, succeeded through the bishops, sent out. Right. To draw more in. Yeah. That's right. Quiz show for you. Quiz show. Probably yes. won't really put you on the spot, but it's really just a question. In this section, in the footnotes, we, a lot was referenced with yes. um, AA. Yep. What is that? I don't know the exact uh, Latin title, but it is the Second Vatican Council document on the laity, I believe, or the apostolate of the laity. Okay. Let's see if we can... Where's all the uh, abbreviations? AA and AG were in there quite a bit. Well, that's why I was quiz showing you. is the, so is the AG. Oh, there. Okay. Apostolicum. You see that there? That's something I can't pronounce. Yeah. You either? Uh, I'm not looking at it, but it is the Second Vatican Council document on the, the lay apostles. Okay. So I'll butcher it. <laughs> <laughs> I surrender. I will not say it. Yeah, you look like, it up in your glossaries. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. And then... Ad gentes is the is uh, Paul the sixth encyclical, I believe. Okay. Ag on uh, evangelization. Okay, good. All right, very good. That makes sense. What is that? Second Vatican Council talking. Quiz show. Quiz I show. Him. Father failed. <laughs> this makes two of us today on the quiz show. Well, you know. You know. All right, where are we going next? I was trying. We were trying to decide because this one will be released the Friday before Holy Week. So our next episode, the one we're going to throw the dart to, will come out on Good Friday. So I was trying to like 
see where we should go, but then I decided that's too much pressure. I'm going to let your hand throw the dart and another hand guide it, and we'll and see where like, we end up. It's not like I would really hit whatever you wanted to I don't also. know. Your aim is pretty good. You think so? Uh, you're, do you mean that? I do. I've oh said gosh, it many Julia. times. I've said it many times. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, theological virtues and gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit. All right. Wow. Nice. 1812 to 1832. That's going to be an action-packed section right there. 21 paragraphs. 1812 to 1832. That's a lot. Great. I'll we start did 20 reading last them. time, I we think. We did? Yeah, I think so. Okay. We'll be okay. All right. The Lord will sustain us okay. and take care of us. I just got really nervous all of a sudden. But I know. Okay. It's all right, Julia. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Well... How about this? I didn't read the in brief paragraph, which summarizes everything we just read. So I'll read that, and then perhaps we can close in a Hail Mary. Does that sound good? Sounds so good. <laughs> Name the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Reading from paragraph 869. The church is apostolic. She is built on a lasting foundation, the twelve apostles of the Lamb. She is indestructible. She is upheld infallibly in the truth. Christ governs her through Peter and the other apostles who are present in their successors, the Pope and the College of Bishops. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.